The Tesla Semi is going to change the trucking industry in more ways than people can actually imagine. But there's a lot of legitimate criticism behind the Tesla Semi that I think is very much justified between Tesla not disclosing the actual weight of the vehicle. So we know it can push, you know, 80,000 pounds, but that's including itself. We're not exactly sure what the payload is going to be. It'll probably be a little bit less given we know how heavy battery packs can be. Plus the notorious issue a lot of electric vehicles have with the recharge times are always going to be slower than that of simply recharging fueling a diesel truck at a gas station. But if we look at somewhat recent history, we can look and see that there are many times Tesla decides they want to go tackle an industry, everyone tells them it's not possible and they can't do it, and then they go ahead and prove us all wrong. That's why you see so many fanboys or so many people defending them, because they have a pretty decent track record of, sure, maybe not delivering things as quickly or at the price point that they were originally hoping, but they do eventually deliver. And JK Moving was a brand that was very, very interested in the Tesla Semi from the get-go, and they reserved a bunch of models and recently reported that they got an exclusive early access tour of the factory where they're working on the next-gen Tesla Semi trucks, and that they saw some very, very promising results. In fact, expecting some deliveries to take place by the summer of this year. Tesla says that the first deliveries of the Semi truck will not be taking place until the second half of 2020, but JK Moving's reports of it coming near quarter two, possibly quarter three, is definitely a lot more re-encouraging that they're not saying second half of 2020 by meaning, well, December 31st, you know, because that's technically the second half. Obviously, there's no other electric vehicle company that's ever designed a product and started delivering it like this before. So, in my opinion, there's reasonable understanding as to why something like this may take a little bit more time than expected. But one thing we do know for sure is they've been testing these things for years. Of course, they unveiled them in 2017, and since then, we've had all kinds of sightings in California. But now, we've even seen some testing near the Canadian border for extensive winter testing, which back in an updated newsletter that Tesla sent out to all of the semi-truck reservation holders, they disclosed that right now they're going through rigorous testing to make sure that the durability of the truck is capable of withstanding, you know, bad potholes and cold weather. We all of course know that when the winter sets in, electric vehicles can lose a significant portion of their range, so making sure the batteries are capable of withstanding that in those extreme temperatures is very important. I'm glad to see these things are out and about and they're actually being tested, but it's also encouraging to see companies like JK Movers that are saying, yeah, we saw the factory, the results look promising, and we're expecting our first six Tesla semi-trucks to be delivered by around summertime of this year. There's also huge potential for growth with the Tesla semi-truck in Europe, as there is currently a law that applies to many nations there that says that diesel trucks over seven and a half tons are not capable of driving on public roads between Sunday at midnight and 10 o'clock p.m. because they cause too much noise and they cause a lot of pollution. So this law has been in effect since the 50s and of course applies to to all diesel semi trucks that fall over that certain weight category, but while the Tesla Semi, I'm sure, probably easily surpasses that weight, it's going to be significantly quieter than traditional diesel trucks and also have zero emissions because there's not a single gas tank on this thing. It's completely electric, so there's reports that Tesla is trying to fight that law and make it excusable for electric semi trucks. Back in the 50s, they didn't have those, so they didn't really think about it, but it sounds like that law is more than likely going to be passed soon, and with Tesla developing the Giga Berlin factory in Germany right now as quickly as possible, that could give the Tesla Semi a huge advantage over other semi trucks in that nation and that demographic in general, especially if they one day plan on building the semi trucks there, which is more than likely. We know that Giga Berlin is starting with Model Y production. Tesla hasn't said anything about semi production ever coming there, but it's supposed to be a major factory based on the blueprints we've seen for it. And given there's obviously going to be lots of demand for an electric semi truck in Europe, and it may help a lot that the population is a lot more dense there. There's a lot of smaller nations that don't have to drive as far, where electric may help immensely because they don't need, you know, a 1,200 mile range on a single charge or tank. Whereas in the United States, that's definitely something I could see coming at a disadvantage. So there are lots of you have commented on my videos in the past about how your diesel truck takes very, very little time to fill up and it can go 1,200 miles on a single tank. But the important thing to remember here is that electricity and charging up a vehicle, just like most people driving EVs today are charging them from home, that infrastructure is more abundant than any other resource we have on the planet. Traditional semi-trucks have to deter from a specific path and stop at a gas station in order to refuel, not to mention those diesel trucks cost a lot of money to fill up. Electricity, even in the worst of circumstances, is always going to be cheaper than diesel, and even if it ends up taking longer, the resource is easier to tap into than traditional gasoline, because whether they're unloading at grocery stores or warehouses, or loading them up, they will have access to power that they will likely be able to tap into, and given Tesla has the most power-efficient motor 
and battery packs in the industry, you'll likely be able to get a significant amount of range whenever the truck is parked. There's a lot of times truck drivers are forced to stop and rest because they're not legally allowed to drive for very long. So when they're stopped at these truck stops, it will be fairly simple to install charge stations at these things as Tesla announced at the original semi truck event that they'll be working with brands at making not just mega chargers, which are similar to superchargers, just more heavily equipped to charge up a semi truck really, really quickly. But they'll also be working with individual brands to bring them Tesla semi charging capabilities at warehouses or docking points and stuff like that. So that basically whenever the truck is not rolling on the road, it will have some way of charging up. So not saying that every single unloading or loading station will be able to give it a 100% charge, but hey, if the truck isn't moving and it's just parked there and people are loading it up with stuff, might as well get some range out of it, which sure, it may be a little bit more inconvenient at first, and this is not a conversion process that's going to happen overnight, but money talks, and as bigger brands are able to see that switching to the semi-truck can result in massive gas savings, way less maintenance because you'll have regenerative braking on the semi-truck, which means that you don't have to change the brake pads as much, and of course no oil changes, and a huge underrated feature that people don't bring up about the Tesla Semi enough is the Tesla Armored Glass, which is supposedly going to be far more durable than traditional glass, yes, despite the botched Cybertruck demo, I know. People act like that demo was terrible because they threw a steel ball at a window and it broke, even though if it was any other glass, the ball would have gone right through the thing. But I'm kind of glad that demo failed because it forces them to go back to the drawing board and make sure that it's even better than it was in that current state, that they can show us more demos of hard things slamming against the glass and I'm sure that armored glass is objectively stronger than standard glass and having that on the semi truck is going to be immensely helpful given you're not legally allowed to drive the semi if it has a cracked windshield. So it's a huge incentive for commercial businesses to stretch their budget a little bit up front with the Tesla semi so that in the long term they can save immense amounts of money. And I've just listed some of the basic stuff with the Tesla semi that is the reason so many major brands have already reserved tons of them. But the next big thing that the Tesla semi has over all of its competitors is autonomy capability. There's cameras on this thing and there's radar sensors and there's ultrasonic sensors that are going to make it one of the safest vehicles you can possibly drive and given it's going to have such a massive payload and the capability to accelerate at such insane speeds it makes sense that you would want to have some safety precautions on there as well but with the help of autonomous driving becoming more and more possible as we've seen with hardware 3 installations on current teslas and the fact that they want to bring that hardware and software to the semi truck it's not too unreasonable to believe that in the next 10 years the tesla semi may be capable of driving itself and other cargo to the point that you can have kind of this convoy of autonomous semi trucks delivering stuff and that of course is going to be significantly cheaper now that you don't have to pay the driver anymore but i get it you know things get very political very quickly when we're like okay what's going to happen to that job market and i'm not trying to argue that this is a good thing that those people may lose their jobs in time or a bad thing i'm just simply saying it's changing the industry in a way we've never seen before okay in the past there may be some semi trucks that figured out how to be a little bit more fuel efficient that figured out how to you know extend range a little bit but there's never been a semi truck to get this many nerds arguing on youtube before there's never been a semi truck to disrupt this many markets simultaneously as tesla is claiming this can beat the efficiency of delivering cargo via train adding autonomy switching to electric capabilities moving towards zero emissions which can also open a lot more opportunities for the semi truck in europe given there's a lot of those dated laws there and yeah the range may be an issue in the united states like i said there are occasional semi truck routes that have to go well over a thousand miles on a single tank but the way i look at the tesla semi is kind of like how some would look at the original tesla roadster this is the first of its kind okay tesla's pretty much only done crossover suvs sports cars and sedans right before they did this commercial vehicle so this is their first attempt sure the range might not be amazing compared to a traditional diesel semi truck but once they start getting these things out there and there's clearly demand for them lots of major brands have already reserved plenty of semi trucks that they'll probably not be able to keep up with demand this year but once they get out there and people start using them then they can start taking feedback from those commercial industries and also with battery investor day coming up this month there is more than likely going to be a few ways that they can extend the life of the battery packs in these semi trucks to prove that hey they're going to last you a million miles the rate at which tesla is growing and the rate at which they're improving their powertrains and battery packs i think will also apply to the semi trucks as elon said that now the range results they're seeing with the tesla semi is closer to 600 miles even though back in 2017 they were promising 500 and not to mention that 80 percent of semi truck routes are under 250 miles so the idea is with the 500 mile semi truck you'd be able to carry your payload to its location and back on a single charge and yeah at first the semi
semi truck may not be able to replace every single use case of every single semi truck. Okay, I get it. There's a lot of use cases out there where just the recharge times and the range is not going to work or the winter capabilities are going to be too damaging to the electric batteries. I get that. This is the first of its kind. So it's okay if it doesn't replace everything, but even if it just does a sliver of what they're promising, it should disrupt the entire semi truck market. And I'm sure that as years go by, the range is going to get better. The battery technology is going to increase. The autonomous driving capabilities are going to get better. And that's how the Tesla semi is kind of like the first chapter of revolutionizing the commercial trucking industry. You know, the Tesla Roadster did not replace, you know, all traditional cars that just fit a very specific demographic. You know, they started off with like, okay, it's just a cool sports car. It's expensive, but it's meant to prove people that electric cars can be cool. And I kind of feel the same way about the Tesla semi. This is the first step to show you that, yeah, they can move stuff. They can have decent range. Sure. Not every situation they apply for, but a significant number of them. And in time it will improve. But let me know what you guys think of the Tesla semi. Is there something I'm just blatantly wrong about or missing? Feel free to let me know down below. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.